you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question first before listening on. In this question, we are told about a metal surface as well as some electrons that are being emitted from that metal surface. Let's go ahead and draw a simple picture to represent that. And so here is the picture and we have a metal surface that we have drawn in black here and we are shining some light on that metal surface and that light is represented by this orange wave. The energy of that light is equal to H times the frequency of the light. And if the light strikes the surface with enough energy, it's going to eject electrons from the metal surface. And often those ejected electrons are going to have some kinetic energy as they fly off the surface of the metal. And it turns out that the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is going to equal the energy of the light minus what is known as a work function. And the question here does not actually give us the value of the work function. What it does give us is the wavelength of the light. And more specifically, that is known as the threshold wavelength. Now threshold wavelength means that the light energy is just enough to cause the electrons to simply fall off the surface of the metal rather than rapidly ejecting them from the surface. In other words, the kinetic energy at threshold is going to actually equal zero. So we can fill that into the equation. And it turns out that we can make a substitution here so that we can replace the frequency with a term that includes the wavelength. And to do that, we note over here that the speed of light is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So if we divide this equation by the wavelength, we can see that frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So we're going to actually substitute that term into this equation. And what we can do next is actually solve this equation for the work function. And that way we're going to be able to calculate the work function. And that's relatively easy. We can just add the work function over to the other side. And we can see that it equals h, which is Planck's constant, multiplied by the speed of light divided by the threshold wavelength. What we'll do is plug in the value of Planck's constant, which is roughly 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times a second and then we'll multiply that by the speed of light which is roughly 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by that threshold wavelength which was given to us as 320 nanometers. Make sure you convert this into the standard unit of meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9. You could then pick up your calculator and determine the so-called work function and you would get roughly 6.22 times 10 to the minus 19th. Now for the unit we can see that the seconds here and the seconds there are going to cancel because one's in the numerator and this is in the denominator and then the meters for the same reason will also cancel leaving us with the unit of joules. So this is the value of the work function and we're going to want to hold on to it and use it to solve parts A and B. So we can now turn to part A which is asking us to determine the maximum kinetic energy and we can actually use this equation once again. So the kinetic energy is going to equal the energy of the light, which is h times the frequency. Remember that we can substitute in the speed of light divided by wavelength for the frequency, and then we'll be subtracting the so-called work function. We'll fill in the known values for h, c, and the work function, and then the wavelength in part a is given to us as 250 nanometers. Remember that we'll convert that into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus nine. So let's go ahead and plug in the known values. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known values. Notice in blue we have that work function. And when we type that into our calculators, we should get approximately 1.74 times 10 to the minus 19th. And the unit is once again going to be joules. So this will be the correct answer to part A. For part B, it's the same process, except we're substituting in 350 times 10 to the minus 9 meters for the wavelength down here. So let's go ahead and simply change the 250 to 350. And when you type that in, you get a curious result. You get negative 
0.33 roughly times 10 to the minus 20 joules for your kinetic energy. Now, be careful here. We cannot actually have a negative kinetic energy. And so, in fact, this value is not the correct answer to part B. We have to back up and look at this from a conceptual standpoint. And so, go back and take a look at the wavelength in part B and compare it to the so-called threshold wavelength, which was 320 nanometers. You'll notice that the given wavelength in part B is larger than the threshold wavelength. Now, remember that a larger wavelength actually corresponds to a lower energy. And how do we know that? Well, we know that energy of light is equal to h times frequency, but don't forget that frequency can be replaced with the speed of light over wavelength. And so we can see that when the wavelength is larger or is increased, the energy is actually decreased. So we have a lower energy compared to the actual threshold energy. What that means is as the energy of this light at 350 nanometers strikes the surface of the metal, it's too small of an energy to actually eject an electron. So no electron actually will be ejected and therefore the kinetic energy will be zero. So in summary, the correct answer to part B is actually going to be zero joules because the amount of energy in 350 nanometers is lower than the threshold energy needed to actually eject an electron.